Greetings to all my YouTube viewers and I sincerely thank each and every one for your honest reviews and feedback. This video is about the physics behind lightning. Lightning is a wonderful captivating phenomena every one of us would love to watch. Amongst us there are many pluophile and then selenophile people who would love to watch rain and moon who would love to watch the sky. They are so fascinated about this lightning. Lightning is actually a electromagnetic radiation millions of energy is getting released. So in fact this energy that has been released from the lightning still now we don't have a device to capture the energy coming from the lightning. If at all we are able to captivate this energy we are able to absorb the, or capture this energy in that short span of seconds then that uh, stored form of energy could be utilized to illuminate even a big city also. But our research is going to be very very exorbitant if we are going to devise a technique to capture the energy from the lightning. Uh, uh, Professor Fletcher recently in 2022 he had released an article saying that if at all there is going to be a copper rod which is going to be pasted in a very highest tall building and then if then there is a lightning striking this copper rod will actually will store some charges and that charges can be electrical charges could be used in, the, in another means. Still, all this research is still pending only because we need to spend so much amount exorbitantly to capture that small, the, the tons of electrical charges in such a short span of time. The, the very short span of time is where is what very challenging. So, this is the research is still like going apart. Maybe in next few years we might have a technique also where we might have a device also like you know even every house can build up a device which will be like capturing the electrical energy from the lightning which can be used there in the household purposes also. Light in the different types of lightning. There are three types of lightning. One is from cloud to cloud lightning. The secondary you have from cloud to ground and thirdly from the uh, ground to the cloud. So the third one is actually a little, little rarer. Sometimes it happens from the lower level of the cloud to the top layers of cloud. But the first two types of the lightning is very common. So this, the namely the gen basic uh, lightning is where you have the potential difference in the cloud and the potential difference in the ground. When there is always a difference in potential only, the charge carriers move from a higher potential region to a lower potential region. Usually when we say in a school level example, I say like you know you should always think of how the uh, water motors work in your home. When you want to take your ground water level to the tank normally we have a motor so water in the ground is more the higher concentration region so water flows from a higher concentration region to a lower concentration region namely the uh, top tanks what you have the building overhead tanks so we have a motor to you know suck the water from the ground level and get stored in the overhead tanks so similarly current the charges also flows from a higher concentration region to a lower concentration region when there is a rainfall when there is a thunderstorm occurring mainly why what is the reason there is a thunderstorm occurring the water vapor the air the water vapor from the ground gets it's hotter and it travels upwards and what happens is the water droplets gets condensed and then fall as a, f a result of a rainfall. Now because of this concept the positively charged protons get stored in the top layers of the cloud and in the bottom layers of the cloud you have all the negatively charged electrons getting accumulated. Because of this condensation process, there is so much of, you know, uh, uh, I will say the clouds, the accumulation of charges gets denser and denser and denser. When, there are, when the accumulation of electrical charges in the cloud is going to be eventually very, very higher, then there is a release of these electrons that travel from the cloud to the ground. So, in between all the air uh, the layers of the air gets heated up in fact it is the heat is very very enormous that it is almost equivalent to the sun's top layer so in that way the le the uh, levels or the layers gets heated up and as a result we get a electrical spark 
Benjamin Franklin said that when you fold the clothes in dark, when you have two three layers or cloth, okay, cloth, there is sometimes a, a very mild lighting spark you can see. So he, Benjamin Franklin, has spoke about this static charges in the seventeenth century itself. How in the school book we we used to have an example for static charges, saying that when you take a ebonite rod and and press it across a silk fabric, then you can see some, you know, you can see, you can feel some spark, a kind of a shock. It's because of static charges. And uh, how we say the small tiny pieces of paper gets attracted by a wet comb. These are all different examples of static charges. So Benjamin Franklin's concept saying that when the layers of cloth, when it is folded in the dark, you could see some small spark of light. That and the lightning is the same concept only. So in fact, it took hundreds and hundreds of years for us to really believe that what he said was right only. this uh, lightning is only because of something called dielectric breakdown so what is this dielectric breakdown air is actually a perfect insulating material if air is going to be a conducting material then we cannot exist on earth because all of us will get electrical shocks then and there because we are using in a uh, numerous amount of electrical gadgets appliances and all so we will be tending to get the shocks so air is always a pure dielectric material means it is an insulating material it cannot conduct electricity this air is actually a medium and the cloud and the ground are two uh, you know regions of Uh, different potential uh, regions this is cloud is of a higher potential region and ground is a lower potential region when the potential difference is going to be very high there is a uh, passage of electrical charges from the cloud to the ground so when it is passing by the air becomes starts actually conducting so you have a spark of light coming that is the main reason of a lightning we say there is an artificial lightning been shown in a tamil movie called tupariwalan tupariwalan movie the detective actually will go and he will find out it was a murder where they created a artificial lightning and said it was like equivalent to a lightning right so how this artificial lightning happens it is only by a concept called dielectric breakdown dielectric breakdown means actually the dielectric material because when you give very high electrical field to a dielectric material at one point it it just destroys all its insulating properties and suddenly the material behaves like a conductor okay so uh, when you give a very high electric field to a dielectric material the so the material will keep on be actually behaving like an insulator but at one point what happens is it loses all its insulation properties and the material starts behaving like a conductor that point we call it as a dielectric breakdown so this dielectric breakdown is one of the reasons of lightning also so when the two the cloud and the ground there is a passage of you know charges from the cloud to the ground the air in between which is actually dielectric in nature will start behaving like a conductor in that small instant of time and uh, the passage of you no know, the uh, the heat flow is giving you that electrical spark that light spark which is like a lightning and because of this we say that the air is behaving like a conductor in that small uh, span of time this is called the dielectric breakdown Uh, artificial lightning what comes to your mind when i say artificial lightning you have a very old device called van de graaff generator it is there in boston's uh, uh, science museum also still we can see this van de graaff generator where uh, it was discovered by a uh, physicist robert so this van de graaff generator will have a big kind of wheel and you will have a, a rod a sort of you know it's a, it's like a electrode so the charges from the ground charges the electrons from the ground will be taken to this wheel and it starts you know spreading across the uh, circle of that rim that wheel then uh, when you have the electrode in your uh, hand and you just you know slide across this uh, rim what happens is the two charges are getting contact and you can see a electrical spark you can see a lightning van de graaff generators are now even available commercially in markets you can see in amazon for 7000 8000 rupees also so this van de graaff generator is a small device it's a compact device which will give uh, which will create an artificial lightning 
Also, we can make use of many other concepts have uh, been recently found out, which says that out of these concepts, you can make an artificial lightning at home also. So, isn't this lightning so interesting? So, with this, I sign off and I thank all my viewers for supporting me all these years. Thank you so much.